she lectures all around the world and has written several books on the topics of stress, mindfulness, health and marketing of a practice. Welcome, Cathy. Thanks for having me, Sarah. I appreciate it. That's all right. Um, so the title of your talk is So You Want to Write a Book? Keys to Getting Your Work to Market. So it's clearly aimed at those who have already decided that they want to write a book. But would you also say that it's suitable for those who, who may have never considered writing a book before? Yeah, absolutely. That's a great question because it does make it sound like if you don't want to write a book, you're not going to get anything out of this. Um, one of the things I'm going to talk about first before I dive into the book writing part is how you can just use writing in general to boost your practice. And that's one thing that people often overlook is doing blog posts, writing for other people's blogs, writing articles, getting articles written about you. That's a great way to build your practice, not only locally, but if you start to get national and international press, then it ups your level as an expert, people look at you more as, oh, well, this, this guy obviously knows what he's talking about because he's had all these articles written about him, blah, 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 blah. And then you can link back those articles to your website because we should all have a website. And then you get this whole, you know, great Google listings and all this stuff. So the writing in general, I'm going to cover first. So okay. even if you don't necessarily have a book pouring out of you at this moment, by the end, you might want to. <laughs> Excellent. That's good. Uh, and you've written and published seven books and have another in the pipeline. Uh, yep. So what's, What's inspired you to start writing books? Yeah, you know, it honestly started out as the reach more people thing. Uh, I had my, hip, my uh, massage practice here in Santa Barbara, and I had read an article about how writing articles can boost your practice. So I was like, okay, let's try that. Uh, so I wrote an article for a local paper, and they ended up making that the cover story. And I got so much attention just from sharing, and it was something simple like, here are 10 different massage techniques that people weren't so sure about. And it's same thing with hypnosis. I mean, there's so many misconceptions and myths about hypnosis. Writing a simple article like that is a great way to start. And then I started writing more and more articles and I was in school at the time, so I had projects. And I had mentioned to a speaker that I wanted to be, I wanted to do more speaking. And they said, oh, well, you have a book, right? And I said, well, no. I said, I wanted to be a speaker. And they said, you need a book. I went, <laughs> oh. Because at the time, I didn't really want to write a book. I was happy writing the articles. Like, I'd never thought to sit down and write an entire book because it seemed so, oh, my God, how do you write an entire book? And then I realized I've been writing for years. I had the contents for a book. I just had to reorganize it. And so that's how my first one was born. It was born out of that need to reach, that want to meet, reach more people, that need to have a book for the profession that I wanted. And it came out of all those pieces that I had already written. So that's one of the things that I'll share in the, in the class is, you know, you don't necessarily have to reinvent the wheel. You probably have other things that you've written that you can convert into a book. So that's how it began. And then it's sort of like getting a tattoo. Like once you have one, you're like, oh, I can't wait to write the, wait to write the next one. So yeah, I'm sort of addicted now. So I'm working on my eighth one, which should be done any right. day now. <laughs> yeah, and that's a really good point that you have there with regards to, you know, if you're already writing content, then you, you you're kind of already halfway there mm -hmm. that i'm guessing is a, a, a less daunting kind of start to to writing a book yeah and there's so many people also because so many people blog now well take mm. the contents from your blog and make yeah. that your book or if you're writing articles and i had had school projects that i thought oh my goodness this will be perfect in there and and when i thought i had to write a book i literally had this idea for a book it's still in my head i might do it at some point but i gathered all this research and i filled my living room full of all the stuff and my husband went so how long is this going to be here <laughs> i said i don't know how long does it take to write a book and he's like hopefully sooner than you think, because they like literally <laughs> were just filled with crap, which, you know, drove him crazy. Uh, and then I realized what, why am I, I literally had this revelation during a, a massage with a client. I just almost sort of had this download of you have content. <laughs> what do you do? And I went, oh, I literally kind of went, Oh my God. You're like happened to this woman's session. It was kind of funny, but yeah. And that's, and the rest of mine have been, the rest of my books have been one was based on my dissertation, so I already had that written. Uh, oh. And then the second version of that was a different spin on the dissertation. So it's like, don't, yeah, don't reinvent the wheel. It's not actually as hard as we make it out to be sometimes, as, you know, is it life? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So how did your experience with your most recent book differ to that of your first? Yeah, it was the, the most recent one, the most recent full-length book that I wrote is called Journey of Healing, and it's a combo of my story along with the 
science and the medical stuff as well. So I, I kind of describe it as a, um, it's an autobiography meets textbook. <clears throat> Excuse me. So you're going to learn stuff from it, but there's also personal stories thrown in. And that was actually really hard to write. Uh, I found when I was speaking, I would share personal stories to make my point of the, the lessons that I was teaching. And so many people were more into my stories. They would like, the, oh, I just want to hear you tell stories. Can you just sit around and tell stories? I'm like, yeah, no, no one's going to pay me to sit around and tell stories. Uh, so sure. And then I, as I was writing this book, I thought I want to put some of these stories in. So it's a very personal book. I talk about how I was bullied as a kid. I talk about my mother's death. I talk about uh, ending of a relationship and ending of a job, you know, thrown in with all this health stuff too. Mm -hmm. And all of these stories lead to a lesson. It's not just me just telling stories for the sake of telling stories. So it was personal. And I found that as I was writing some of this stuff, especially about the bullying, because I had talked about it, but to actually write the story down, I was like, wow, that's heavy. And I haven't really, like, no one knows this about me. And to put it in writing and put it out there, it was a little bearing. It was a little like, hey, look at me, you know, look at my, my nude self standing here. Um, so that was interesting. That was a different experience. And I started that one from scratch. I didn't pull a lot of other work to build that one. So it was a little more time consuming. It's a, it's a larger book, but I, I love it. It's my favorite book because it's, it's me. It's, it's mine, you know, um, yeah. probably my bestseller too next to my stress book, though the marketing book does well too, but that's fun. Um, so yeah, it was just a different experience because it came from a personal place. So I think yeah. that was the main difference. And then taking that to a traditional publisher, uh, because two of my books have been traditionally published. So that was different as well. The, mm you know, having to actually answer to somebody was a little bit different. And it was kind of like, well, but this is the way I want to do it. <laughs> you know? So that was, that was a change as well. The only yeah. child in me was like stomping their feet and saying, I want to do it my way. And you don't always get to. So that's cool. It's about compromise on that. Sure. Yeah. So you'll be drawing on your own personal experience of writing and publishing your own book within the presentation. Yes. Because depending on what you want to do with the book is going to determine whether you self-publish, which is so easy these days, or if you want to pursue a traditional publisher. And I've talked to so many people who they're, they're determined to get a traditional publisher. And then after talking about it for a while and what they want to do with the book, it makes zero sense to try to find a traditional publisher. So I have literally an entire, probably two slides of, if you want to do this, self-publish. If you want to do this, traditionally publish. Here are the pros and cons of both, because there are absolutely advantages and disadvantages to doing it each way. So it just depends on what, your end res what you want your end result to be. You know, and we'll, go, we'll totally cover that. So you will know by the end which way you want to go. Excellent. Yeah. And is there anything yeah. else that you can share uh, with regards to what people can expect or, and learn from the presentation? Yeah. I, I mean, I'm, t I'm going to talk about the, I, I think one of the biggest things is not only how to start writing the book and some sort of um, more esoteric, uh, like not affirmations per se, but you know, like how you can actually get into the mindset, how you can shift your mindset to write your book because yeah. people write different ways. And so we'll talk about the different types of learning and how the best way is for you to write your book. Uh, and then I'm also going to talk about the different types of publishing and then how to market your book, how to, okay, now you wrote it. What the heck do you do with it? Because yeah. so many people write books and very few sell books. So how to do that, how to use that to actually boost your practice uh, and a couple stories of the pitfalls that I fell into and then working with like publicists and PR people, that sort of thing. So yeah, I want to make sure everybody walks out with just a solid foundation of what to do to write the book, how to get your ideas, how to get it on paper, and then also how to take it to market and then how to market it. You know, it's going to be, you're going to walk out of there. I know it's only an hour, but you're going to walk out of there pretty much ready to make these, these changes and these decisions. So I'm excited about it. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds great. And lots of information uh, for you to share with people there. So yeah. um, it definitely will equip people with a better understanding of the process that's involved with, with writing and marketing a book. Oh, yeah, because it, it, it seems like such a daunting task and it did to me too. I mean, that first time when that woman said, you've got to write a book, I literally kind of went, oh no, 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 no. You know, and when I was a kid, I always thought I'd be writing. I thought, but I thought I'd be writing like crazy novels. I didn't ever consider writing a nonfiction book. And it was a little scary because there's, there's also legalities that go along with that. And it's time consuming and it's a little scary because you are, it, depending on what you're writing, you're kind of bearing your soul and you're putting that out there to be judged and to be, uh, to be criticized and critiqued by people and also praised, of course. Um, but it was, it was, it was kind of overwhelming. And I realized you don't have to write an entire book. You write a word at a time. And I think people get that 
that very overwhelmed feeling. And it's like, you know, how do you eat an elephant? One spoonful at a time. You know, yeah. we look to this end goal that is so daunting and then we freeze in that and don't do anything. So I'll also give a little bit of uh, tips and tricks of how to get past that, how to get past the writer's block, how to set up your life so that you can write the book in a good amount of time, talking mm -hmm. about editing and, you know, that sort of thing. So yeah, we're going to cover it all. I'm excited. Yeah, great. And one of the things that you said there about, uh, you know, being worried about putting yourself out there, I think that potentially stops a lot of therapists from, from writing blogs, you know, let alone a, an actual uh, book. Right. Well, and we all have something to share. You know, everybody has a story. Everybody has a message. It's not always book worthy. You know, um, some people, everybody thinks that their story is phenomenal. I've had so many people say, oh, let me tell you about my childhood. And I'm like, okay, we all have a story, you know, um, and your parents might love to read that story <laughs> and your friends might love to read that story or not. You'd actually be surprised how few of your friends buy your books. It was actually stunning when I wrote my first book and I thought, of course, all my friends are going to pick up a copy. It's 10 bucks. It's kind of disappointing. But so just because you have a story doesn't mean it's a marketable story and they are, everybody's sure that their story is the most fabulous one or they think they have nothing to say. Those yeah. seem to be the two extremes of that. Um, and I guarantee you have something to say and I guarantee not everybody wants to hear your story. <laughs> so it's got this, this dichotomy of, eh, I'm sure it was good. But uh, yeah, but we all have, we, especially hypnotherapists and the hypnotists, because I was at this conference last year. Everybody yeah. at this conference is brilliant. It was so much fun. Yeah. You all have knowledge that you can share, whether it's client stories or whether it's the techniques that you use or whether it's your background and how you got into hypnosis. Well, you are all experts. So let's share that story and help others. Let's elevate this profession. So many misconceptions and so many myths, especially with how it's portrayed in media. And, you know, I, I would love to see, and you and I talked about this off air, you know, more people sharing what hypnosis really is and how it can help. It's going to elevate the entire profession. It's not a competition. It's a camaraderie of building this profession up to something much, much bigger. Yeah. Yeah. I just think that it would be great to see more high quality hypnotherapy books out there because I think that, you know, there are books out there, but I think, you know, we need to raise the standard of them. Definitely. Uh, yeah. Not only books that are available for other hypnotherapists to read and learn and develop their knowledge, but also for, for general public as, as well. Um, and wouldn't it be fantastic if, if some of those books came about as a result of your presentation at the UKHC? I would love that. I would love to see a bunch of people in there and, and give all the knowledge that I have on how to get that book written and published. So yeah, I'm excited about it. Yeah, excellent. So, so your talk is on the Sunday morning at 11.45 in the Richmond room. Yep. I, I know I'm really interested in your presentation. And for those who are too, who haven't yet bought their tickets, you can head on over to the website at ukhypnosisconvention.co.uk where you can purchase them. Um, I've really enjoyed speaking with you, Kathy, um, and thank you very much for sharing uh, your your knowledge there, um, and obviously giving us a bit of a taster of of what the presentation will include. Absolutely, it was my pleasure to be on, Sarah. Thanks. That's okay. So, see you in November. I'm looking forward to it. See you yeah. all in November. Yeah. Bye for now, then.